Welcome to worship with the community of Kilrenny Parish Church. We may not be able to worship in the church building at this time, but we can still to come together as a worshipping community to give thanks and praise to God. Hopefully, if my technical abilities are up to it, this morning we will include the hymns as part of this recording, but feel free to stop at any point and go and listen to a recording or follow the hymns in the hymn book yourself. Uh, I will give you the hymn numbers as we go. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your people in this place. Give us a sense of your power in our lives, your love in our hearts, and your joy in all we do. Join us now as we worship you this day. Amen. So let me pause as I share the first hymn with you. It's hymn 340 in the hymn book. It's when Jesus saw the fishermen. Let us pray. Lord God, this is your day. We have used the other days of the week to our own advantage, but today we are at your feet. We are at your disposal. And all you ask of us is a song on our lips, a smile on our face, a dance on our feet. The rightful response of a people brought back from the cold into the sun, a people claimed and named again as the travellers of the highway, a people loved into life and rescued from ruin. See, here we are, some of us glad for the week gone by, some of us grieved at the way it treated us, the grind more obvious than the gladness, the grudge more quick to arrive than the pleasant face of the sun. But here we emerge from all our shadows into the light. Here we encounter truth and the life we need. If we do not want to be dazzled, if we do not want to be revived, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Yes, gentle King of the cradle at Bethlehem, King of the cross at Jerusalem, King of the morning, dawn on us once again we pray. Star of awaking, star of promise, star of our true direction. We give thanks for your promise and your love for us. And now we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. After John had been put into prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe in the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, come with me and I will teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little further on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. This next hymn is one you can sing along with if you feel like, but it might be one worth meditating over and just taking a moment or two just to contemplate as you as as it please. <laughs> Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you walk through the waters, I'll be with you. You will never sink beneath the waves. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. When the fire is burning all around you, you will never be consumed by the flames. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. When the fear of loneliness is looming, remember I am at your side. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you dwell in the exile of the stranger, remember you are precious in my eyes. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine, you are mine, oh my child, I am your father, and I love you with a perfect love. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. Last week we heard the story of the calling of Philip and Nathaniel, and this week we return to Mark's Gospel and the most famous calling of all, that of the fishermen Simon, Andrew, James and John. 
It's a dramatic scene with these four men working at the lake shore on their boats and Jesus appearing and turning took them away from their work to follow him. Two questions come to mind. Why did Jesus begin his mission at that particular point in time? And why did he choose these men? Our readings begin not with Jesus, but with John the baptizer. We are not told how long John had been preaching in the desert in Judea, but he had become famous for his message of repentance. That notoriety would have taken months or possibly even a couple of years to develop to become noticed by the crowds, to attract a following of those, it, it, uh, following from people in those times, didn't happen overnight. There was no social media to create an instant recognition. Rather, it was all word of mouth, person to person, news traveling slowly through the Holy Land. Theologians speculate that Jesus may well have become a follower of John before he struck out on his own after the baptism. And that, and that might well make sense, fitting with the notion of John preparing the way for Jesus to offer a greater message of God's redemption and not simply the people's repentance. John's message had become unpopular with the authorities and in particular with Herod, of whom he'd been especially uh, critical. Herod feared John's prophetic message and eventually had him arrested. And this may well have been the trigger, the moment that Jesus felt was right to step out of John's shadow and begin his own ministry. Growing up near the lake, near Lake Galilee, Jesus would have known many of the fishermen and their families. He would have been known for his exceptional character and a sense of holiness, by which I mean not so much that he stood and preached like some street corner preacher that we all probably try to avoid. Instead, I imagine Jesus as one of those people who didn't need to speak in order for you to be drawn to him. Jesus didn't need to preach for you to know he was special. He would have embodied all that was godly in the best possible way. Everything about him would have spoken to those around him that he was destined for greater things. Our fishermen, Simon, Andrew, James and John, had probably known Jesus or known of him for many years. They may well have been friends with him, listened to him late at night, at late night meetings on the shore, gone with Jesus to hear the Baptist preach. All of this is complete speculation. We have no way of ever knowing this. But it doesn't diminish their actions in leaving their nets to follow Jesus when he called them. To my mind, it enhances their commitment to him and his calling, that knowing him as well as they probably did, they left everything they had and everything they owned to follow their friend and teacher. In a world where insecurity was a way of life, where having a roof over your head and a regular income were key factors, not just for the individual, but for their extended family. Upping and leaving everything you've worked for to follow an itinerant, itinerant preacher would seem like madness then, just as it probably would to us today. So we've explored why Jesus might have become, begun his own mission at this point. And we've said something about why these four men chose to follow Jesus. But why did Jesus choose them? I suspect friendship would have been part of that reason. But Jesus also needed people to support him in his task. Notice I said support him, not that he needed supporters. The distinction might be subtle, but I think it is important. Supporters often follow their idol or their club or their tribe blindly, displaying loyalty without reason. Having people to support you is different. They are there for you as well as you being there for them. They can question, offer opinions, be constructive, be annoying, 
not always agree with you, but still offer you their support because they realize you need them as much as they need you. I think that's a loyalty of a rather different order. So maybe it wasn't so much that Jesus chose them and called them, just maybe they chose Jesus. And because of their support, he felt able and ready to begin his mission. He had a group of people around him he could trust and rely on. They would sometimes annoy him, irritate him, and even exasperate him. Just read Mark's gospel further on and just see how annoyed he gets at times. But they also enabled him to complete his mission. He needed them just as much as they needed him. Isn't that always the way with true friends? Isn't that the most human thing in the world? And isn't it just as true to this day? Jesus calls us because he knows we need him, but he also needs us to complete the circle and to continue his mission, even today. So I ask you, are you going to be a friend of Jesus, a support to Jesus and his work? Amen. And may God add his blessing to these words. Now just bear with me while I find the right buttons to click once again. I will not do that, I'll go back. The final hymn in this morning's service is For My Sake and the Gospels Go, hymn 248. <laughs> Oh, 
Let us pray. At the name of Jesus, something releases us. Something unlocks the tongue. At the name of Jesus, something begins in us. And we do not know its name, so we call it a dozen names. At the name of Jesus, we pause before an open door. We have been here before. We have never been here. For he has wonders untold to tell us, and miles to go with us, and the sea will dry up before he has finished his tale. And so, in the moment it takes us to speak his name, we grow into fresh maturity, and we realise how far, this far, he has waited for us to catch up with him. How long? This long he has willed us to speak, willed us to start, start to startle us. Will this knocking at an open door, which he never shuts in case we come early or late, ready or flustered, bold or bashful. At the name of Jesus, we know we have so much to be sorry about. Lord, have mercy upon us. At the name of Jesus, we know we have so much to be glad of. So let us travel under authority, but the amazing authority that wants only the best for us. So let us start again, not anxious for anything, save that we fear to miss the wonder. So let us know that the open door is home, even when we spurn it. And let us not fear to wander and get lost, for had we not got lost, we would never have had to look for the new road. Amen. And now go in peace. Blessings be upon you. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, and deep peace of the infinite peace to you. These things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>